Hi, I'm Blythe Nelson, Associate Professor in the Biology Department at the University of British Columbia, Okanagan Campus. I specialize in teaching undergraduate students about human anatomy and physiology. Today, I'll show you three 50-second animations I use when introducing physiological concepts that students struggle with. For example, when students are learning about the heart in the lab, they're using models and dissecting cow hearts, and what I really want them to understand is how the valves move and how electricity travels through the myocardium during each cardiac cycle. It can be a challenge to make sure they're really getting it. Students have questions like, how do the two sides of the heart coordinate contraction? Or, how does conduction sync with the opening and closing of valves during the cardiac cycle? Or, I don't understand how pulmonary circulation reaches every single alveolus. Let's start with the circulatory system and look at an animation in the cardiac cycle. First, I'll quickly review the heart chambers and valves with students. Then, to bring to life how these structures work together, I'll introduce the cardiac cycle animation. I want to show students how all the movements, valves opening and closing, cardiac walls contracting, and blood flow acting together as both sides of the heart coordinate in each cycle. This animation shows them that the two sides of the heart are really acting together as one pump with two circuits. When I show this in the lab, and then let students watch it over and over again as they look over their models, I can see them getting a much better understanding, and in their lab reports I see the answers I'm looking for. For many of my first year students, the heart's conduction system is a little abstract, but when they see the animation of heartbeat, blood flow, and conduction all in one view, I always hear gasps of understanding around the room. I'm going to move over to the respiratory unit here for the next sample. Internal respiration is a challenging topic because students need to connect what they learned about red blood cells in a previous chapter in order to follow the paths of oxygen and hemoglobin down opposite diffusion gradients. But when I show them this animation on internal respiration, it really helps me because it begins by showing gas molecules bound to hemoglobin inside the red blood cells. Then both gases are shown traveling between red blood cells and tissues at the same time. What I get with this animation is a quick way to have students visualize the process of cells exchanging gases in both directions at once. When I ask the question, describe how diffusion drives internal respiration, after showing this video, I get the answers I'm looking for. Lastly, I'd like to show you one from a very challenging topic, the lymphatic system. This content is difficult for students to absorb, partly because it involves so many organs and various cell types, and partly because so many cells overlap and cooperate in their functions. This animation gives a good overview of the many organs and the range of processes involved. My favorite part is that it allows the students to see how lymph is collected into the lymphatics, and also it shows one of the immune cells doing its job of killing an invader. I've showed you just three examples, but the bank of animations in here is large. I've worked about 15 of them into my lecture presentations. In my teaching experience, students respond to this content because it's visual, beautifully produced, and short. They'll watch them again and again, looking at different features each time until everything fits together. They love to learn this way. Plus, I know that these animations are accurate and well-researched, so they're getting great information in a way that stays with them.